Hello everyone, welcome back to Switch Up, I'm Mark Walker, and today we're going to look at Serious Sam, the collection on the Nintendo Switch. This one came as a little bit of a surprise to most of us. They announced it really recently and it just, well, it's here. If you're unfamiliar with the Serious Sam series, imagine an amalgamation of almost every 90s action film and you'll have a good idea of how the game plays out. And it was originally released 19 years ago, coming from developer Crow Team and has seen a number of different publishers over the years. This time around though, brought to us by the one and only Devolver Digital. You didn't expect anyone else, did you? <laughs> Not for a game like this. Is it Good Morning Babylon? Or, ah, uh, uh, yourself. Let's find out. The story goes that the Earth is under attack from a new alien menace known as Mentor, and as they're about to fall, they discover an artifact which allows Sam to travel back in time where he can then face the alien threat before it even began. And that same story arc pretty much follows through every title, indeed with the most recent game in this collection feeling more like a remaster of the original, but with different cutscenes and additions to make it a little bit more fancy. From a gameplay standpoint, all the titles are first-person shooters that have six different difficulty modes, the last of which is unlocked when you complete the game. Featuring a number of weapons from your standard pistols through to shotguns, more powerful shotguns, rocket launchers and even sniper rifles. In terms of the controls, it's pretty standard here with the left stick controlling the movement of your strafe and forward and back and then the right being used for the camera. The first thing I wanted to check was whether or not they'd implemented gyroscopic aiming, as it's something I use quite a lot. And unfortunately, the answer to that question is no, there's no gyro aiming here at all. Now, with a pro controller, it's okay, and it wasn't really an issue here. They've also added a number of auto aiming options, if that's something you struggle with, but it seems like a real omission to me, and something that should have gone into this version on Switch. But that's not to say this is a lazy port. As you'll see when we get to the visuals section, timestamps at the bottom if you want to skip, they at least put effort into that area. I was really pleased to see a quick save implemented that replicates the old F5 press from back in the day, if you remember that. And you can do this simply by pressing the minus button. Other game modes include the ability to play through all of the stages in cooperative split screen play, and there are online modes here as well. One of my favourites is the survival mode, which as with any horde mode, sees you trying to defend against wave after wave of enemies. I always get far too addicted to these and spend more time in there than the actual main game, but it's nice to see it made the cut. Serious Sam, the first encounter and the next encounter have quite similar gameplay. Much of the action takes place on a single plane and it's all about fighting off insurmountable odds, whether that be through pistols, shotgun or the delightful chainsaw in the second game. It was a game that put total emphasis on the shooting and enjoyment of just blowing stuff up and in that regard simplified the genre back to its very basics. Now having said that, the enemies that you fight against do require very specific strategies to take out. If I could refine the gameplay down into just a few words, I think it would be intense and reaction based. The stages are quite linear, although there are a number of arena style segments which will see you have to fight off a set number of enemies before you can progress and there are a couple of optional puzzles to unlock some extra items. Throughout each level, you'll be looking out for other hidden areas and items, much like traditional Doom and Duke Nukem games, and at the end of the stage, you're shown your scores and how well you did or, uh, not. They forego all of the quality of life things you might be used to from modern titles, hand you a very large gun, or sledgehammer, and then let you loose on quite a linear stage filled with thousands of different enemies. One slight change in the third title is that they allowed you to do melee moves. Things like ripping the beating heart out of an enemy and then throwing it at them, or spinning your sledgehammer around to smash them to pieces. It's all very Doom 2016 in that regard, while still keeping the same hectic gameplay. Essentially, this is Circle Strafe Reverse the game, with the occasional ridiculous one-liner from John J. Dick. <laughs> yourself! One area, other than the sheer number of enemies that differentiated it from titles like Duke Nukem, were the size of some of the enemies that you had to fight. They were ludicrously blown up models that at the time looked ridiculous, and they still do, but dropping them with a few rockets to the face is just as fun now as it was then. Overall then, they're really fun games. There's a lot of content here. There are multiple modes such as survival, as well as playing through on split screen with a friend. I haven't been able to test the online functionality because the game's not out yet, and despite being able to control it quite easily, I do miss the lack of gyro aiming. Gameplay scores 16 out of 20. Control score a good but not great 15 out of 20.
As far as visuals and performance go, when Crow Team first made the game, they ended up making a proprietary engine known as the Sirius Engine. Originally quite simplistic, it latter saw versions 2 and 3 include more modern features that tax GPUs such as HDR, Bloom, Parallax Mapping, etc. And the difference between the first game in this collection and the last is quite striking. What is nice to see is that the developers have included a performance mode as well as a graphics mode so that you can choose which you prefer. The graphics mode tends to run 30 FPS, however it really couldn't cope with the third title and the fluctuations are quite large whereas the performance mode in the third title was fine however they left it uncapped so it travels between 40 and 60 and you see some noticeable stuttering and drops at times. They would have been much better off just capping that out at 30 but Serious Sam 1 and 2 will lock out at 60 FPS and they'll stay there regardless. While the games aren't going to turn any heads, they also don't look too bad. Certainly falling in line with the recent re-releases of Duke Nukem or the Turok titles, they do a little bit more than the originals, but they still look quite dated and that's okay. Where performance isn't quite as good as I would have liked is in split-screen co-op. I'd estimate it's between 20 and 30 FPS at times and it doesn't look very smooth at all. I was still able to enjoy the experience, but it's not ideal. As far as audio and sound design go, things are pretty decent. Obviously, we have the dulcet tones of John J. Dick delivering his classic one-liners. You ought to be more careful. You'll put an eye out. And they're as funny as they ever were. And each enemy has its very distinctive cries, which unbeknownst to me have definitely been etched into my memory. A certain panic gripped me when I heard this sound. The guns all sound suitably weighty and I didn't experience any crashes or glitches. Overall then, visually, the game looks great in both docked and handheld mode, with the first two titles running at max resolution and frame rates, but with a few frame issues in the most recent title and split screen. Visuals and performance score 15 out of 20, while the audio and sound design score 16 out of 20. Which takes us on to value. And initially, you might look at the £26.99 price tag and say, nah, that's way too expensive. And while I agree it is quite expensive, let's break down the prices here. You've got Serious Sam The First Encounter, which is £11 on other platforms. Serious Sam HD The Second Encounter, which is £15 on other platforms. Two of the DLC packs, one of which is £7 on its own and the other the same. And then Serious Sam 3 BFE Edition, which is currently £30 on Steam. So I don't know about your maths, but you're getting essentially 60 odd pounds worth of games for £26.99, which actually isn't too bad. What you could argue though, potentially, is that perhaps all of those prices are a little bit OP and that perhaps something like this in digital only format right now should cost around about 20 quid. You could argue that. I might not agree with you. I might not disagree with you. Either way, I give value a very respectable 17 out of 20. It's one that absolutely needs a physical version, I'd say. Overall then, regardless of scores, it's the same serious Sam you remember from when you were younger. It's totally ridiculous, brutally violent, and reminds me of a golden time where everyone didn't get offended by everything. It scores a switch up score of 79%. Let me know down in the comments if you'll be picking this one up if you are a serious Sam fan, and do make sure you subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content. A big thanks to our Patreons who support us each and every month. You guys are awesome. And as always, for all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya! Party time. <laughs> oh, yourself! <laughs> Run! <laughs>